Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the derivative of the inverse secant function. So here we have uh, d dx of the secant inverse of x equals 1 divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so um, this one's a little bit strange in that it has this absolute value in it here. Um, and actually, there are at least three different ways to prove this uh, that I know of, uh, maybe four, I don't know. but. Uh, one of them, we could do it like uh, the way we proved the derivative of the inverse sine function, um, but that's going to be kind of complicated and messy, so let's try to avoid that. Uh, another way is uh, to use the chain rule, but we haven't talked about that yet, so we're not going to do it that way. Um, and then the third way uh, is with some kind of uh, tricky algebraic manipulations. They're not even really that tricky, but let's go ahead and do those. Um, so... Let's start by saying y equals the uh, inverse secant of x, okay? All right, so first, um, before we move on, what we want to remember is uh, what's the range of the inverse secant function? So the range uh, of the inverse secant uh, of x is what? Well, in interval notation, it's uh, 0 to pi over 2 a okay, like that, and then union pi over 2 to pi. Okay, so this is just a refresher um, from trig, I guess. Uh, 0 to pi over 2, and then union pi over 2 to pi. So remember, uh, this close bracket means includes 0, close bracket over here includes pi, and then the open parenthesis over here and here means we don't include pi over 2. So in other words, um, it's everything from 0 to pi except for pi over 2. Okay, that's what the range of the inverse secant function is. So, um, remember the range, that's the set of all the output values, right? That's the set of all the uh, y values here. Okay, so um, this means 0 is less than or equal to y is less than pi over 2. All right, and this one over here means pi over 2 is less than y is less than or equal to pi. Okay. So, um, hold that thought just for a second, and let's go ahead and uh, come back over here. So, if y is the inverse secant of x, then that means x, oops, that means uh, x equals, let's go ahead and get a new color here. Uh, this means x equals the secant of y. Okay? So, here we have x uh, is a function of y, so let's go ahead and take uh, the derivative of x with respect to y. So in other words, we're going to do dx dy, okay? And uh, secant of y, you know, that's just a regular trig function, right? We already know the derivative of that. Um, if we take the derivative of that with respect to y, we're going to get secant of y times the tangent of y, okay? So if x is secant of y, then uh, derivative of x with respect to y is secant y tangent y. Okay, now... Um, we're going to do some algebraic manipulations here, but before that, we want to come back over here and note uh, y is between 0 and pi over 2 like this, or it's between pi over 2 and pi like this. Okay? So this corresponds to quadrant 1. Okay? If 0 is less than or equal to y is less than pi over 2, then uh, y is somewhere in quadrant 1. right? Um, and if y is in quadrant 1, then secant of y and tangent of y are both positive. Okay? And if you multiply two positive numbers, then you get another positive number. How about over here? Uh, if y is between pi over 2 and pi like this, then um, y is in quadrant 2. Okay? And if y is in quadrant 2, then secant of y and tangent of y are both negative. Okay? So if you multiply two negative numbers together, you get another positive number. All right? um, tiny little detail, if y equals 0, then uh, tangent of y is 0, and you just have 0, not a positive number, but that's okay. And same thing, uh, if y equals pi, then tangent of y is going to be tangent of pi, which is 0. But again, uh, that's okay. All right. So, um, basically, no matter what y is, okay, as long as it's in this uh, valid range here, uh, we're always going to get something 0 or positive over here. And because of that, we could say this. Okay, so uh, what we can do is square this and then take the square root of it and we'll just get the same thing. All right, so that's going to be uh, secant squared y times tangent squared y. Okay, now again, uh, we know that we can do that 
uh, because this is positive. So if this wasn't always positive or zero, then we couldn't do that. Um, why is that? Well, let's just take a look real quick at something like this. So negative 2, let's say we have that. Uh, if we said negative 2 equals the square root of negative 2 squared, uh, that's not exactly correct, right? Uh, the square root of negative 2 squared is actually the square root of 4, which is positive 2, not negative 2, all right? But because uh, secant y tangent y we just saw is always positive or zero, um, then we can say this here. All right, so that's good. Um, all right, let's go ahead and continue with this here. So let's split this up now into a product of two things. So this is going to be uh, the square root of secant squared y times the square root of tangent squared y. All right. Now here, uh, in general, if you take the square root of something squared, let's say uh, u squared, that's going to be the absolute value of u. All right. So here we have the square root of secant squared of y, so that's going to be the absolute value of secant of y. All right. And remember, secant could be positive or negative. If y is between 0 and pi over 2, then secant is positive or 0. But if y is between pi over 2 or pi, uh, then secant is negative or 0. So we got to have these absolute values here just to be careful, right? Remember, uh, this product here, secant times tangent, that's always positive um, for these values of y. But secant itself could be positive or negative. So we've got to have these here. All right. Now, what about this here? Uh, we have the square root of tangent squared of y. Um, what we want to do now is use a trig identity. And the trig identity we're going to use is uh, one of the Pythagorean identities, which says 1 plus tangent squared uh, of y equals secant squared of y. All right. So in other words, uh, subtract 1 from both sides, and then you're going to get tangent squared of y equals secant squared of y minus 1. So then the square root of tangent squared becomes the square root of secant squared y minus 1. All right? So that's what we have there. OK, so now what are we going to do with that? Uh, now we're going to come back up here. y equals the inverse secant of x. Um, and now we're going to use the inverse function theorem. Okay, so we've used that a couple times before with the inverse trig function uh, derivative. So let's go ahead and erase the range here. Don't really need that anymore. Um, so dy dx, the inverse function theorem, remember that tells us that that's 1 divided by dx dy. Okay. And what's dx dy? Well, we found it over here. Uh, it's secant y tangent y, then we uh, algebraically manipulated it to get this here. All right. So 1 over dx dy is 1 over this guy right here. This right here is dx dy. Okay, dx dy equals all this stuff here. So this is going to be um, absolute value of secant of y in here times the square root of secant squared of y minus 1. All right. Um, so that's dy dx here. But uh, what is secant of y? Secant of y is just x, right? It's just x. So uh, remember, we want to eventually express this in terms of just x because it's dy dx. Okay, y is a function of x, so the derivative of y with respect to x should also be just a function of x. Right? And here's a secant y, here's a secant squared of y. So secant y is just x, so we can put that uh, back into here. And then what we're going to get is... 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. All right? Um, so that's where that absolute value comes from, uh, is this step right here, when we took the square root of secant squared. Um, and this is our desired result here, right? 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And that's the derivative of the inverse secant. So let's go ahead and just recap what uh, happened real quick. So we started with y equals the inverse secant of x, right? And then uh, we found out, or we remembered what the range was. It was uh, between 0 and pi, except for pi over 2, OK? And uh, if y is the inverse secant of x, then that means x is secant to y. So we can take the derivative with respect to y, and we get secant y times tangent of y, all right? And then we said, OK, if y is between 0 and pi over 2, then secant to y times tangent of y is always a positive number, or it's 0. 
and if y is between pi over 2 or pi, then secant y times tangent y is, again, always positive or zero. All right. Um, so because of that, we can say this equals the square root of that squared. Now remember, we have to know that this is always positive or zero, because if this is ever negative, then we can't say this. All right. Um, but it's not negative for those values of y uh, in the range, in the range of the inverse secant. Okay. So this is not negative, so we can say this. Um, and then we want to simplify this, so we split this up. Um, square root of this times that is the square root of this times the square root of that. All right. Now the square root of secant squared is the absolute value of secant. And we have to have these absolute values because secant itself could be positive or negative all right, for those values of y in the range of inverse secant. Um, but remember, when we multiplied it by tangent, it was always positive or zero. But uh, secant by itself could be negative, so we have to have these absolute values. Um, and then here, tangent squared of y, we use the Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, then we subtracted 1 from both sides, um, and we put this into here. So now we have just in terms of secant, right? And that's good. So here's our dx dy. Okay, this was uh, dx dy, right? So then what we did was uh, we went back up here, and we said, okay, y is inverse secant of x, so dy dx. Uh, equals 1 over dx dy, and that's the uh, inverse function theorem right here, okay? And dx dy, we know from down here, is this guy right here. So we take this, put it up into here, and then we have this, um, and then we want to go back to the x variable instead of uh, y, right? So we want our answer to be in terms of x. So secant of y, secant squared of y, um, if y is secant inverse of x, then x is just secant to y. So this is just x, this is x squared, and that's how we got our answer here. And uh, that's the derivative of the inverse secant function.